You want to automate a task in, let's say, Google Sheets, or maybe you want to learn how to code. Well, in both cases, this video is for you. I'm Chanel Greco from Saperis, and in this video, I'll show you how you can automate a task in Google Sheets by writing a couple of lines of code of Google Apps Script. Before we dive into this tutorial video, do me a favor and subscribe to this YouTube channel because every Monday and Thursday, I publish a new video about Google Apps, Google Apps Script, and the whole G Suite bundle. So that you don't miss out on any videos, go ahead and subscribe. Good. Now, what is Google Apps Script? Well, it's a flexible scripting language based on JavaScript. So if you've ever written some code in JavaScript, you'll be learning and you'll be using Google Apps Script in absolutely no time. It's a scripting language that's built into Google Apps, so you can add, create add-ons and, and automate tasks in, as I mentioned in the beginning, Google Sheets, Google Docs, Gmail, so you can create um, automation scripts where you actually go ahead and create emails, paste the content, send it out, whatever you feel like. So there's almost no boundaries to what you can do with Google Apps Script. It's written in your editor, in your browser, actually, in the built-in um, editor in Chrome, which means that you don't have to install anything on your computer. So if you have a Google account and you have a Google Chrome in Chrome browser installed on your notebook or on your computer, that's all you need to write Google Apps Script. And the code itself, well, that runs on the Google server. So also there, no setting up of any development or production environment. And in my opinion, it's an easy language, an easy programming language to learn. And so if you're thinking of learning your first programming language, I think this would be a pretty good option. In our demo scenario, we'll be solving the following problem. Imagine you have a weekly report that you get from an external data source and you find yourself continually or with every report formatting it the same way, the way you want it to be. Now, the solution for repetitive tasks like that is to automate it. And that's exactly what we'll be doing. So with Google Apps Script, we'll be creating a menu item, a custom menu item, that when we click on it, it formats our report the way we want it to be. And that, in the end, saves us lots of time. So this is how it's going to look. This is our report, and that's how it's going to look, including the, the custom formatting menu item that we're going to add to it. Okay. Now, before we start writing code, we write an algorithm or we, we think of the algorithm. And in our case, we're first going to access our active spreadsheet and store it in a variable so that we can manipulate it. We're going to identify our header row as well as our entire table and store those two informations or those objects in two separate variables. We're going to change the format of our header row as well as our table. Some formatting will go on there and we'll create a filter for our, our header row. Now you might be saying, whoa, back it up. Algorithm, that sounds like super complicated. Well, actually, algorithms are nothing else than step-by-step -step sequence of operations. That still might sound a bit complicated. I bet you each and every person watching this has a morning algorithm. Mine is I get out of bed, I take a shower, I drink a yummy espresso, and I ride my bike to work. So you see, an algorithm is nothing than a sequence of separate tasks, separate operations that we have to do. And if you get the order wrong, then your algorithm is going to fail. It's not going to achieve the outcome you wanted. Like if I were to ride my bike to work while I'm still in bed, so before I did step number one, you know, that's not going to work. Now, a second um, thing I mentioned, which you might not be quite sure what it means, is a variable. 
And a variable is a storage that contains some value. Also here, an example that we've all come to contact uh, at school. So A plus B equals C. At least that's what my teacher taught me. And what does A, B, C stand for? Where well, it stands for any value that you want it to be. For example, 1 plus 3 equals 4. Or my preferred example would be pumpkin plus pie equals pumpkin pie. So it's not that difficult, you see. It's just storage for whatever value you put in there. I'm now in Jane Examples Google Sheet document. And if you would like to follow along with this tutorial, go ahead, pause the video, open up whatever you report you have or whatever Google Sheet document that you keep on having to format so you can follow along. What we'll want to do is in our menu, you click on tools and then on script editor. And this opens up a separate tab. And this is where we write our Google app script. So that's what I said at the beginning that you don't have to install anything. Why not? Well, because Google already provides you with all the tools you need. The first thing we'll want to do or what I like to do is I like to give this a name. So I call it a report formatting that will save our script um, under that name. Okay, so this is where our code goes. And I'm not going to call it my function, but instead I'm going to call it format report. And you see the way I write this format and then the second word report in R is in capital letters. Well, that's because I said Google Apps Script is based upon JavaScript. And in JavaScript, the way we name our variables is by using camel case. So camel case means whenever you write a new word, so two or multiple words together, the first letter of the following word is always written in capital. Okay. So let's create a variable where we'll go and store our active spreadsheet, which we're in. So once our code will run, what we'll want to get is this spreadsheet here. So we write let sheet, for example, spreadsheet app, that's the object. And it already gives me a list of what I can use. The method we're looking for here is get active spreadsheet. Perfect. Okay. So once we have our spreadsheet stored in that variable, we can do things with it, we can manipulate it. And to do so, we'll say, we're creating a variables of header or headers because they're multiple headers in that row. And then we're accessing the value of our variable sheet, which is our active spreadsheet. And we're saying get range and we'll be accessing range A1 to F1. There you go. Let's close that statement. How do I know? what to write here. Let's go back to our spreadsheet, A1 to F1. That's where I know it from. That's where I get it from. And then we'll store our whole spreadsheet dot get data range. There you go. The whole thing. So the whole table, hmm? the whole table, we'll store that in the variable of table. Good. And the next step is now to start with the actual formatting. So let's say I want to format my headers. I'll say headers set font, um, font weight. I'll set it to bold. And I'll set the font color to white. And the background, I'll set it to my corporate identities color, which is the following. So I can also pass in the hexadecimal value of a number. It doesn't only have to be the written word like white, black, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the formatting of our header. 
the next thing we'll want to do is we'll format our table with, let's say, we want to change the font to use the super cool Roboto from Google. And oops, again, we'll want to say set horizontal alignment to let's center. Oops, let's center our whole table. So the content of the cells of the table in itself will be centered. And we'll set a border, uh, ba, 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 which is this one here. So this method and um, a bit down the line in this tutorial video, I'll, I'll explain what a method is tells us if we want to set the border, we can um, separately set the top, the left part, the bottom part, and the right part of this border. And that's exactly what we'll do. So you're here on the top, we'll write true, which in programming is often a word to, um, to, to do something. So it's either true or false or um, one for true and zero for false true, that true as well. We do not want a vertical border, so we'll say false. And here we'll say true. And where is it? I want to set the color as well. So I'll use the same thing as I did here. Bam, bam, and I'll say spread sheet app. So that's my object border style. And I get to choose solid. So it will give me a solid purple border around my table. Good. The last formatting that we'll be doing is that we're going to set a filter. So a filter in our header row, and that is table dot create filter. And let's finish that formatting. So let's go ahead and save this code by clicking on the floppy disk icon. Good, very well. So, so far, so good. Now I've mentioned some things that you might not quite know what they mean. And let's start with object. I mentioned that that's our object, object that we're accessing or that we're manipulating. What does that mean? Now, in programming language, an object can have or be two things. It has data in the form of fields, and we refer to them as properties or attributes, and code in the form of procedures, and that we call either methods or functions. Again, Sounds a bit complicated. Let's break this down with a simple everyday life experience or example. We have a hotel. The hotel is our object. And this hotel, for example, has a name and that would be our property. So in a programming language, the way to actually read what is the name what is the value of this property, you would write hotel.name. And what it gives you back that we call the return value. And this um, example would be Pal Palace Hotel. And the method that we're using in this example is book a room. So we're interacting, we're manipulating the object. Why do I say manipulate? Well, think that there's a property rooms and maybe a property uh, rooms available. Well, if we use the method book a room, then the property rooms available will change. It'll be minus one. So the way you would write this in code would be your object hotel dot book a room, which is the name of the method, and it would do something. It would change something on this object and it'll most likely give you back return value. And in our case, it would be the information room booked. So we're using the dot notation to get information from our object and to manipulate our object. But that's the next thing. 
dot notation, what does that mean? The dot notation is the way we access the properties and the methods of an object. So you might remember the first line of code that we wrote was let sheet, that's our variable. So let is the keyword we have to use to create a variable, which we give the name sheet. And then we assign a value to it. And the value is our object, our spreadsheet app object. And then we need to use the dot to use the method of get active spreadsheet on that object. And this get after get active spreadsheet, that's just one of many other or, or many methods that exist on this specific object. There's one to create a new spreadsheet. So we would pass in the name in this method. We could get the current cell, create a new conditional format rule, open a file and many, many more. Now you might be asking yourself, but I'll never memorize all those methods. Don't worry. You don't have to, and I'm surely not going to. Why? Because Google has a documentation for that. So under developers.google.com, you find the full documentation of Google app script of all the options, um, op objects you can use. So like the spreadsheet app object, the Gmail app object, and so on. And the methods, the properties that exist on these objects that you can then use to create your automated task, your add ons or whatever it is that you want to create. So that's how you learn how to use Google app script of course, watching my tutorial videos, but also reading up on the possibilities that Google has given us by using um, or using Google app script. Now, the last thing we'll want to do is create our custom menu item that appears whenever we open up our report in Google Sheets and provides us with a menu item, which we can then click. And once we've clicked that, it triggers the code that we just wrote now, and it formats our spreadsheet or a report the way that we want it to be, the way that we defined it to be. So that's the last step that we want to take care of now. So we're back in our code editor and our browser. And we'll want to create a second script and we'll name this function that we have. That's a keyword that we have to write. Otherwise, Google Apps Script doesn't know what we're trying to do. And we'll call it on open. I might as well give it the name of um, on open whenever I access this file or whatever, but we're going to keep it nice and short. So the name of the function is actually up to my liking. And we'll set, we'll create a variable and we'll call it UI. And again, ask access or object. And here we have a method called get UI. And then we'll say UI dot create menu. And we give it the name that should appear in the menu. We'll call it uh, spread sheet or no, let's go ahead and call it custom formatting. There you go. And what we'll do now is that we'll chain the next method to our previous one which would be add item. And here again, we have a name format report. And so this will be the name that, that will, will appear um, in our menu. And what we have to now define is, well, which function should run once this button gets clicked. And that would be this format report. Let's copy that. There you go. And tuck, tuck. let's paste it here. 
close that out. Ah, no, I'm missing something. Once we've done all of that, we have to add it to our UI. There you go. Save that. Uh, no, no, I ran it. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, so, oh, we have a syntax error. Well, this wasn't planned, but good thing it happened because when you code, mistakes happen. And one of the most common mistakes are syntax errors. Syntax in a programming language is like grammar in a normal written language, spoken language like English. So when it tells me syntax error, it's actually saying, hey, you made a grammar error in your Google Apps script. I'm not understanding, no comprendo, hmm? more or less like that. Okay, this is what's wrong. It has to be a semicolon. So let's save that. Good. So it wasn't able to run our code anyway. Perfect. Now, what we'll do to test if this works out the way we expect it to is we'll go back to our spreadsheet here and we're in a browser. So opening up this spreadsheet is the equivalent of just refreshing the browser. So this is simulating that I'm actually opening up this file for the first time. Okay. So now it's going to take a second because it's reading through our code. And where is it? Hmm, hasn't come yet. So let's refresh again. Let's try this again. Yes, go ahead. Oh, it was too fast. Oh, once again. I'm so impatient. Here it is, custom formatting. So the last couple of lines of code that we added, well, that's what it created. The custom formatting menu item, which I can, cl can click on. And now I have my format report. I'll click on that as well. The script is running and this, this is totally normal because this is our script asking um, Google Sheets for permission to access my personal Google Sheets account here. So I'll say continue. Yes, Jane example accepts, allows, and then look what happens. Nothing. Am I too impatient? Let's try it again. Running script, running script. Now, there you go. So now it finished running our script and that this year. So the displaying of this format, changing of the UI in, in uh, Google sheets and automatically having this formatted the way we want it to be, that was achieved by this code that we added here. I think that's pretty cool. And it goes to show that there are, are almost no limitations to what you can do with Google Apps Script. The only limitation is your imagination. If you have any questions concerning Google Apps Script or the code that I used here, or if it's you're trying to follow along and it's not working, leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because you want to become a G Suite Pro. Believe me.